Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Brett and I, Millimeter USA here. And today we're gonna to bring you a versus video between the A-Rex Rex-01, a full-size nine millimeter handgun, versus the Mega 2000, also a full-size duty handgun, both in nine millimeter. The ammo is provided by Sig Sauer Elite Performance Ammunition. We appreciate them keeping our channel up and running, supplying us with ammunition. And Gun Mag Warehouse sent us some extra magazines that we're gonna be using in the Mega 2000. That video will be coming to you next. So we're going to start this versus video off with the Rex 01S. Decocked, double action first round. Haven't shot this gun in months. Finally got a reason to get it out of the safe. First mag down. Second mag. Double action first round. This is going to be an interesting comparison video when we go talk about it at the table. Both these guns come with two mags. The Rex comes with two 17 rounders and this comes with two 15 rounders. The Mega has high visibility followers, which we'll bring up later. All right, you go ahead and shoot him. See what you think. What do you think? Still shoots nice, man. Yep. You're the only one that owns one of these, and it, uh, it's still very smooth shooter, very light recoiling. It's just a nice, nice package. excellent so guys this six hour elite performance ammunition is 115 grain nine millimeter traveling at 1185 feet per second just so you know what we're shooting go ahead and try the double action there we go What do you think? It's really soft shooting on this. It, uh, the double action surprised me again about how long it was. Yeah. But uh, it's really a great nine millimeter. And one other thing to note, this 17 round Metgar mag has a plus two base plate on it, so it's 19 rounds total. And it's a CZ 75 standard mag. Shots. All right, let's go finish this video off and have a thorough comparison at the tabletop over there. Okay. 
Let's talk about these pistols a little bit more in detail and things that kind of stand out to us as users, which may make a difference to you guys as buyers. Now that we shot them side by side. Right. All right, so which one do you want to start with, the Rex? Yeah, let's go ahead and start with the Rex. All right, so let's talk about the magazines first because I was alluding to that earlier. The Rex Zero One comes with two 17 round magazines. They appear to be made by Mechgar, but who knows, honestly, they're very high quality. They have a black follower, whereas the Salser Maz Mega 9mm comes with two 15 round CZ75 style magazines with a high visibility red follower. They appear to be very high quality, never had one problem. This gun has over 600 rounds <laughs> through it now. And you haven't even cleaned it yet. Yeah, this thing is dirty. It's a runner. <laughs> yeah, it's been fantastic. So regarding the magazines, it's good that both pistols come with two mags out of box. A huge benefit of the CZ-75 style pistol, the Mega 9, is that it takes all CZ-75 magazines. And of course we use two in this video, the 19 rounder and the flush fitting 17 rounder. Mechgar mag with the blue follower. High visibility again. That's a huge benefit to the Mega 9mm because these mags are completely proprietary. And that sucks. Although they are cost effective at costing like only $20 per mag. Remember that? Because I bought like 10 of them after I purchased the pistol. Okay. So that's good. That's a great deal on magazines. Yeah. But the huge benefit here, guys, is if you're like me and you already own a CZ-75 or two, you probably have 10 magazines that will already fit in this pistol right here. If not more. So, you know, if you're a CZ-75 guy and you've already got a few, this is definitely a huge plus to pick this up. It's a hell of a runner. It's been very reliable, no issues at all, and over 600 rounds of firing it. And young Beretta, you need to clean it now. I know. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the ergonomics of these two pistols. What do you think of that? I think that's something that stands out between these two, and that's, you know, to each user. I mean, what's comfortable in my hand may not be comfortable in your hand. If you have an extremely large hand, then you may like the pistols with the large grips on them. If you have an average size hand or around that or smaller, then you're gonna like this pistol right here. This thing is more rounded, it's smaller as far as its circumference is concerned. It's more trim. It just feels very comfortable in the hand. Whereas the Rex Zero One feels more like a Beretta 92. It's a little bit more clunky in the hand because it does have a thicker frame to it. It's wider this way. It also feels wider this way. I was just holding my uh, Glock 30 up next to it. Now this is a 45 caliber pistol. This is a Glock 30. Look at the width here compared to the width of my 45 ACP Glock. It's very close to the same. The Glock is a little bit bigger and it's basically this added piece back here which shoots out past it. But my point is, this is a, a meteor grip on this. My hands are fairly good size and you can see, you know, I've got a decent grip on it, but. It has a much thicker grip than say a six hour 226 Legion or something like that. Look how my hand encompasses the grip on this which adds to comfort to me and a little bit better control. Yep. This grip actually kind of reminds me now of a 226 Legion as far as how it feels in hand. Not necessarily like texture or anything like that, but actually the size of the grip in hand. It feels fantastic. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. And I highly recommend it to anyone who's, you know, doesn't like, oh, I don't like the Glock grip. And, you know, if you don't like the Glock grip, you probably aren't gonna like the grip on this too. It's not to take away from this, this pistol at all. It's been excellent also for us and its reliability has been fantastic. So they're both huge winners as far as that's concerned. We're trying to pick the differences between the two pistols at this point. As far as the sights are concerned, I'm gonna go ahead and close the pistols here for a second. The sights are decent on both or good on both. The sights on the 2000 Mega are just a little bit faster because they're a little bit brighter, they're a little bit quicker to pick up. So not bad with the A-Rex, but a little bit better over here. They're a little bit more higher contrast in comparison to the Rex. Yeah, they are definitely faster with target acquisition. And a little bit tighter too, I think. What do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, tighter meaning less air, less space between the front sight post less play. and the rear sight. So there's just less of a gap when you're centering your front sight post between your rear sights here. The Mega 2000 is a little bit better. 
So which one do you think had a smoother recoil and pulse? They're both pretty smooth. Um, if you want to get to the minute parts, I think because the, the uh, bore axis is a little bit lower here, that possibly this one felt a little smoother. This is a little bit higher over here, guys. Pretty easy to see when you compare the two pistols side by side. You've got just a little bit here, and you have a larger slide over here. So ever so slightly, I think the 2000 Mega was a little bit better. Both pistols shoot great, though. Yeah, not taken away from either one. All right, let's talk about the features of these pistols. The Rex 01 has an ambi mag release, so if you are a left-handed shooter out of box, you're going to love that, the fact that it has a left-handed magazine release, and it's also on the other side for righties. You also do have a decocker on this pistol, whereas on the Mega, you don't have that. You have a safety. So here's your decocker slide release on this pistol. And your safety right here, as you notice, the hammer doesn't fall. And you I think you saw me do it in the video. You actually have to get a good grip on the hammer here, pull the trigger. And yes, you could be doing this on a live round. So good grip. I put my middle finger in between to kind of block it. And then I lower it very carefully, point it in a safe direction at all times. And, and then, then you have a double trigger. action trigger. Right. So another feature that the Rex has is the Rex does have four cocking serrations and it does have a full-size Picatinny rail to mount accessories on the pistol. So this pistol has a few more features in comparison to the Mega. And that costs money, you know, in design and putting them together and designing the pistol from the ground up. So we understand that and there is a price difference between the two to reflect that. Yeah, which we will talk about later in the video here. Another feature that both these pistols have is they have vertical serrations on the front strap and back straps of the pistols on the frame. So that's nice to see, you know, it's just not a plain back strap and front strap. Yeah. With nothing on it. And I think they do help traction a little bit. Um, the A-Rex is okay. They're both kind of okay. I wouldn't give one much higher marks than the other one. The biggest difference is the grip feel and we already covered that. The more I shoot this gun, the more I'm loving it. So let's talk about weights real quick. The Mega 2000 comes in at 38 ounces. It's an all steel gun, so they're known to be a little bit heavier. Where the Rex 01 comes in at 32 ounces because it has an aluminum alloy frame down here, which is a little bit lighter than steel. So even though the pistol may seem a little bit girthier or bigger, the weight advantage actually goes to the Rex 01. So let's talk about the triggers a little bit, young brother. The uh, double action in the Mega is just a little longer. It's smooth, it's very smooth, but it's longer and it's also heavy. I'm gonna guess around 14, 15 pounds. Uh, the A-Rex, it just breaks quicker. It's also heavy, but the travel itself is less, which I kind of like. Um, so the double action, I think the Rex, is slightly better, even though the Meg is smooth. Um, it's just quicker, it happens fast. As soon as you start pulling on it, you just don't have as much travel time and the pistol goes off. As far as single action on both pistols, guys, they're both just really good. You've got take up here, it firms a tiny bit of creep before it breaks. I mean, it, it's almost instantly. Uh, reset. Not bad for how far it has to go up. There's a little bit of play as you bring it back and then you're at the wall again and it breaks. Uh, excellent single action in the racks. Okay, here's the double on this. A Little longer, it's smooth, but it's just longer. I think it's more consistent though. It is very consistent. It's consistent all the way through. All right, and single action? And single action. Here's your take up right here, not bad at all. Take up, wall, little creep, and it breaks. I think it has a lighter single action trigger. A little creep right there, and then it breaks. Reset. 
about the same distance of travel forward. They're close. Um, let me do that again. But because of the frame being a little bit more ergonomic, you can get your trigger finger in there a little bit more, or as Justin Opinion calls it, the grip index. Yeah, there's no question about that, and that all has to do with the whole circumference of the grip. It goes back to the advantage of this pistol over that pistol or a Glock or something else that's wider, um, and the grip, grip itself is larger overall. So the reset, out for it, about the same distance, close, and then coming back in, you see that little bit of creep right there? Just a tiny bit. So. As far as, you know, a $400 handgun and a $600 handgun, they're both pretty damn good triggers. Yeah. And talking about price, let's talk about that a little bit here, Brutus here. Absolutely. So your Rex-01 over here, which we talked about, it does have a few more features and stuff, and I mentioned that that does add to the bottom line. Actually, a feature we forgot to mention on both these pistols, well, we kind of covered on the Salser Maz, but this pistol also does have a manual safety, which you flick up, whereas this, flicks down so both pistols do have manual safeties good point kind of interesting yeah though if i was going to use this gun uh guys i would have the safety off i would have around the chamber and i would have already ridden the hammer home just so you know i mean if i was going to carry this gun if this was going to be my gun to use i'd have it loaded and i'd have the safety off oh you can't have the safety off my god i've been carrying a glock for 20 years and it's been loaded the whole time yep you know, so, you know, having a loaded gun doesn't scare me at all. You know, what are you doing with your trigger finger? Keep your trigger finger straight until it's time to actually fire the weapon, then reach for your trigger. Anyway, um, yeah, good point. This one is a little counterintuitive um, to lots of CZ75 owners and stuff out there because they're used to flipping it up, I believe, and yeah. this flips down. Now, the good news is from your shooting grip, you know, if you wanted to, it's fairly easy but I think that's the same to be said with the CZ-75. I think it's a feature you can definitely ignore, though. You shouldn't not get this pistol because of that one feature, yeah. in my opinion, at least. And I know you kind of feel the same way. You kind of want to buy one of these, don't you? Yeah, I like it a lot. As far as, you know, if you want it on safe, there it is. You know, if you want to ride it home, I've already shown you guys a perfectly safe way to do it. Point the weapon in a safe direction, ride it home, let the trigger back up. If you want to put it on safe at that point, you still can. Um, but remember, you pull this gun out to use it, you got nothing until you flip that back up. Anyway, kind of getting off topic a little bit about my personal views on the safety and how they should be used or shouldn't be used. That's a personal decision by you guys. Okay, back to price. So we were talking about the A-Rex and how it has more features and stuff and it does show up in the price. The price on this pistol right here when you picked it up was $650. And I think they're still going for something close to that now. If not the same price. Yeah, so $650 over here. Uh, $409 right here, um, yeah, it represents a value, as we said in other videos we've had with this pistol. I wanted to see if it was going to still run 100% the more and more we shot it. It has zero malfunctions. I'm impressed with that. For a $400 handgun, if you want something a little bit different, you don't want to maybe uh, pay you know, the prices of CZ-75s and whatnot, but you are interested in the, uh, the type of handgun that it is, this seems to be excellent. Definitely. And the very last thing I want to cover on the handguns is that these grips do not come stock on the pistol. You get a much cheaper set of grips. So you can add that into the cost of the $400 gun. It's $470 with these grips right here, which are absolutely fantastic. And Young Beretta has all the, you know, information on these grips if you're interested in that, uh, picking up a pair to put on this handgun if you purchase it. And it does only go on this handgun, not on the regular CZ-75s. Yeah. So, final thoughts. Which pistol do you think is better for the money and you would recommend? I hate it when you guys make me pick one over the other. Um, but I realize that we've done several versus videos and not really picked a winner, just showed how much we like each gun. This is another case in this. They're both really, really excellent. If you have a Rex-01, I get it, man. It's a, it's a really nice pistol. Is it much uh, thicker, or harder to operate than a Sig Sauer, you know, 226? Not really. They're right there together. This is basically a CZ-75, like my other two that I already have, and I absolutely dig them. They're terrific pistols. This has been the biggest surprise. When you consider cost, this is the clear winner because that is $200 more.
Yeah. And the other thing to keep in mind about this pistol over here is it's it's very proven. There's hundreds of thousands of these pistols out there in different militaries and police agencies that use them throughout the world. Again, this is a uh, pistol that's made in Turkey. By Salsermaz. And it's very widely used over there. And its inherent reliability is not just from it being a great handgun, but because it's a CZ-75 style pistol. And, you know, not only is this pistol itself used widely around the world, so is its true predecessor, the CZ-75. Yeah, there's a huge history and track record here. Not so much over here, though the Rex-01 seems to be shining. Um, I haven't read it or seen anything negative about the pistol. So again, if you own one, I get it. It's a great pistol. If I had to pick one or the other, I think I'm gonna go this way. Um, I like the sights better on this handgun. They shoot pretty much the same from pistol to pistol. The extra weight you really don't notice over here. They're nine millimeters, they're very light recoiling and stuff. So if you're gonna make me pick between one or the other, I'm gonna take this or one of my CZ-75s, but we're talking about the Salsa Maz Mega 2000 right now. I feel the same way. The value on this is just unreal compared to this. And I own both these pistols, you guys, and I bought this one. And honestly, I'm not gonna say I regret it, but if I could buy a second one of these instead of buying one of these and buy, you know, five or six more magazines and have two CZ-75 pistols, I'd rather do that. That's kind of where I'm at. All right, guys, that pretty much sums up the video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Beretta 9mm USA, for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future.